Why you need a $10,000 bankroll to win $10 an hour card counting. Applying the Kelly criterion to card counting. In part one of the video, we saw that astute card counters aim for this region between one half the Kelly amount and the Kelly amount because it gives the greatest possible bankroll growth rate consistent with safety. So what about applying the Kelly criterion to card counting? Your advantage or disadvantage varies with the true count. Sometimes you apply at a disadvantage, sometimes with a small advantage or a large advantage or neutral. Typical good blackjack games have a negative one half percent return for a freshly shuffled deck. In other words, a true count of zero. And the return improves by one percent for each plus two change in the true count. How much should you bet at each count level? And what is your expected bankroll growth rate? This graph shows the frequency that each count value occurs as a percentage of time on the left side. The red line is for six decks and the green is for two decks. I'll focus on the six deck situation. The two deck will be similar. This graph was generated by simulation by Norman Wattenberger. Uh, go to his website to see how the simulation was done. By the way, Wattenberger has a free online book about blackjack, which is as good as any blackjack book you can buy, in my opinion. And it's free online and no advertising. So if you want to learn more, uh, go see his book. There's a link to it underneath the video. OK, so let's go to the spreadsheet. Here I've considered 100 hands, and I've copied the percentage from the frequency table uh, in this column. In other words, uh, for a true count of zero, 42 hands out of 100 will have a count of zero. 11 hands out of 100 will have a count of one, and so on. And I filled this whole table from negative six to plus six. The total is 100 hands, and you can see the graph of this column is very similar to the graph that we just saw. Now the true count of zero corresponds to a return of negative 0.5%, and each one count improves the return by half a percent and likewise in the negative direction. On this column, I've put the bet size that you should make. Now, ideally, when you have a, a negative count or zero, you would bet zero, but you can't do that all the time. You're going to have to play some hands with a negative count. Um, however, I've assumed that when the count is the worst, and the worst uh, three, four, five, six percent of the time, you can walk away or take a break, uh, go to the restroom or whatever, and, and not play against these worst hands. But I'm assuming you're going to have to play uh, all of these hands. Uh, let's say the minimum bet is $10, so I put $10 here in these bets. Now, for these bets where you have an advantage, the ideal bet for the fastest growth rate of your bankroll. You should bet an amount that's a percentage of your bankroll equal to your advantage. So I'm assuming here a $10,000 bankroll. When you have a 1% advantage, you bet 100. Uh, so if half a percent advantage, you bet 50 and so on. Your biggest bet will be 250 per hand when you have a 2.5% advantage. This column shows the total amount you've bet that's at each count level. That would be the number of hands multiplied by the amount bet per hand. And here is your average win rate for e at each count level, and that would be the your player advantage multiplied by the total bet at that count level. And you can see most of the win is up here in the, in the better count. Your total win for a 100 hand session is the amount you win on the good hands, these are added up and it's $27, minus what you lose on the bad hands when you have to play against uh, zero or a negative count, um, and that's 520. So $27 minus five, your session gain is about $22. Now this is assuming you've um, counted cards perfectly, made no mistakes, and you're always able to bet exactly the Kelly amount now, that's not very realistic because you can't go changing your bets very suddenly. Usually, if the count turns good, you have to gradually build up. If you suddenly change your bet from 10 to 
100, for example, uh, you'll catch the attention of the casino personnel and you'll find yourself escorted out for card counting. And also, as we saw in the first video, you don't want to always play right at the Kelly. A little bit less is better if you want to avoid volatility. If, on the other hand, you like volatility and you not don't mind uh, big losing streaks to go along with your big winning streaks, then you would try to bet these amounts. But let's say you want to bet a little less than these and you want to gradually build up your bets. Let's take a look at an alternative. Here we're targeting 80% uh, of Kelly instead of 100% of Kelly. And we're limiting our maximum bets to 120, which is 12 times your minimum bet, so that the ratio of max to min bet is not too large to avoid scrutiny from the casino. And this maximum bet is about 50% of a Kelly, which is a good, very good size. So if we, with these smaller bets, you have these smaller uh, wins, and uh, your positive is only 18 instead of 20, whatever it was last time. You take away the losses from playing against bad decks, and you've got a total win of um, about $13 uh, per session, 100 hand session. And let's say you're polite, you tip the dealer uh, $5 per hour uh, when you're winning and nothing when you're losing. Nearly half your sessions you'll be losing, so on average you'll be tipping two and a half dollars per session. If you subtract that from your gain, your actual average gain is $10.30. Of course, in a typical session, you're, you're betting hundreds of dollars here. So a typical session, will you'll be winning or losing hundreds of dollars and eking out an average gain of about $10 per session. So that's why I'm saying you need a bankroll of $10,000 to win $10 an hour card counting.